<clears throat> happy Wednesday, happy Wednesday to you all. I'm doing something new today, which is I'm going to include our IG streamers, our IG viewers. So for today's webisode or class, um, because I, I, I realize I haven't really been on IG, so I want to make sure that um, they get some of this content too. If they're new to me, they know they can uh, go ahead and subscribe to our Facebook pages and subscribe to YouTube at LA Super Agent. So for those of you who are new to me, Ready, Set, Real Estate airs on Wednesdays. And today, kind of like my debut of coming back after, you know, a perfect storm, uh, I've decided to also include our IG family. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle my camera and I'm only talking to the IG people right now. So I'm, I'm going to do this as best. You're going to have this very weird view until I can figure this out in the future. But for today, I actually want you guys to be privy to today's presentation. So <clears throat> let me share my screen today and for those of you who are is, uh, is here, I am here. Hello. Hi. Drop a comment. Say hi. Say hello. How have you been? Oh, let me slide over. King Jesus, happy Wednesday. <laughs> How are you? I'm uh, so excited to see you on the YouTube today. I am feeling really pumped and great. Um, shout out to those who are on my uh, IG live stream at LA Super Agent. Listen, today we are going to be discussing monopoly. And I think the temperament of what is happening right now in the United States is that much more important for us to understand, understand the history of real estate, understand the history of monopoly so that we know how to play, so we can understand how to play. So this is going to be interactive presentation today. Kanum, he says, Grand Rising Queen. Hello, King, how are you? Listen, my kings are showing up today. Uh-oh, y'all better watch out. Today is going to be an interactive uh, presentation. I also want to take a moment here. Kanum Alexander, he's also co-host to the show that I will be a guest on today called Spit and Policy. So tune in. They do a live broadcast. You can call into the show. We are going to be talking about the power of property. So this is almost like a two part. If you tune in today, you get to learn the history and where that power comes from, why you should be leveraging the opportunities before you, especially right now. And then uh, later on today at eight o'clock, is it uh, eight o'clock? Drop the link, Kanum. You can go ahead and put the link for the Spit and Policies page. Today at eight o'clock, I imagine we will go ahead and um, we're going to go in and talk about some power moves. And I've got some goodies for you all the time. You know, I have goodies, goodies for you. All right. So with that being said, for those of you who are on my YouTube got it he's got the link so for those of you on facebook go ahead and click that link and tune in uh to a very interactive show as well so today it almost acts as a two-part and so funny because kanum did not know that i was going to be debuting this concept that i've i've done for the black billionaires club with evan jefferson and we had a phenomenal time to this day people are are feeling the impact of what i shared they did not realize that the game of Monopoly that they've been playing every day really has been sugarcoated, right? It's, it's, it's been to placate and recondition you and reprogram you away from the real life game of Monopoly that we all should be playing, especially if you are a person that talks about legacy building. See, there's a difference between talking and doing. We can all talk about these feel good conversations, but if we're not getting to the root of why we need to be doing that, if we're not getting to the root of how this whole thing started or was founded, right? Yeah, you can say, oh, you know, the United States was founded as, you know, capitalistic country, you know, and you can give me old Plymouth Rock stories and et cetera, et cetera. But listen, you're talking about a country that has gone through the Industrial Revolution, that has gone to the 
um, the in, industrial revolution, but and then you're talking about our technology revolution. You're talking about a renaissance, and right now we are in a time of a renaissance. You feel me? Listen, for those of you who are tuning in, my name is Lisa Puerto. I am host and founder of Ready, Set, Real Estate. I am a national public educator. I'm an active, active, you said difference. I'm an active California real estate broker here serving our communities. And I have a referral network that can serve you uh, nationally as well. So I always say, if you learn from me, you get connected with me, I just invite you to give me the opportunity to refer you out to one of my colleagues or teams, because that's how we cycle and recycle the dollars, right? I'm an independent broker. I am a, uh, I am a business owner as well. So <clears throat> as we're talking about supporting one another, those are things that you can think about that if you're learning from me and you've been watching me on this platform for the last five years and counting, I just ask that you reciprocate the opportunity to do business together. All right. Um, so for those of you who are new, you know how I do this, right? So I want you to uh, come on in here. Press one lets me know you're here. Press two lets me know you shared it. All right. Press one. I'm here to you shared it. How are you feeling over here on my um, Instagram? OK, so it, let me say hi over here. <laughs> All right. Look, I'm getting my highs. Cool. OK. So I like I said, the folks on the IG, I said, you guys are going to have like this weird view right now until I can figure out how to stream on the IG. But nevertheless, we're going to rock and roll with the show. All right. So good stuff. Good stuff. Here we go. Let's jump right into it. I'm going to change my screen. <clears throat> Classes in shit session. Feel free to stop me at any point. Pre feel free to stop me at any point and let's engage. Uh, drop your questions. I want to hear the ahas. I feed off of the ahas. So I want to feel those, you know, the, the, the energy here. Because listen, I had taken time out for my family over the last month. So I have not been online. So this is my this is my debut. This is my welcome back piece. Welcome back. I want you to I want to feel welcome back. All right. The golden girls are in the building. Jacqueline Mack is, says, I'm here. She says, press one. I'm here. Kanum Alexander says, one, I'm here. And two, I've shared it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, uh, price of admission, as you all know, right? Price of admission. I charge for these things, but I'm not charging for this. But price of admission is that you let me know you're here and that you shared it. OK, this is how we empower one another. It costs you nothing to let someone else know what is happening on this side of the of the line right keith johnson says look at you keep shining if you need me for anything please let me know keith johnson let the people know what you do okay see so you, uh, you're out here you're out here telling people but you're not telling people let them know what you do as a matter of fact i would love for you to stick around because keith johnson is a title rep and i have said this before and i will say this again one of the most powerful players in the real estate industry. One of the most powerful players in the real estate industry, because oftentimes you guys think it's the broker. You think it's the seller. You think it's the buyer. You might think it's the investor. Eh. Keith Johnson, please let them know. I, I don't know if he knows where I'm going with it, but one of the most powerful players in the real estate industry is the title officer. Please drop that down in the comments below is the title officer. See, y'all going to learn today. You're going to learn with me today. <laughs> you are going to learn today. Dr who is the most powerful player in the real estate industry is the title officer. What is the role of the title officer? They have access to deeds. They have access to those records they have access and as a matter of fact last year one year ago today i shared this thing called racial restrictive covenants and what that means is that it was very legal my people to have it spelled out in the deed that a property could not be transferred to a filipino chinese japanese negro or Jewish person. Those were very, very real deeds. 
They're called racial restrictive covenants. They are against the law today, but listen, don't we feel the impact and effect when we look at neighborhoods today? Well, that's because it was spelt out in the deeds. It was spelt out in the title records that properties could not be transferred over to a group of people. You will learn today that if it's anything you want to do revolutionary, go utilize some of these buyer programs, these first time home buyer programs. Go utilize these programs today. If you want to be revolutionary, you want to, you know, I hear people say, go vote, you know, go vote for me, Set, go vote for me, I'll set you free. Listen, pay attention, pay attention, all right? So today, we're going to talk about the real life game of Monopoly. <laughs> Evan says she's back. I am, and I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. Evan says she is back. Jacqueline says, I've shared it. Wonderful. Keith Johnson says, thank you. You are absolutely welcome. You are needed. You are appreciated. It, you know, representation is so important. And this is what our movement does through Real Estate 100, right? Is showing the next generation that representation is important. So they get to see people who look like them, been through their walks of life and make it possible. All right. So we're going to talk about, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve, don't worry, Kanum, I will save some of this for tonight's show, but let's just call this part one. So people get a little history lesson. So when they get, when they're privy to me later on tonight, they say, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Cause some of you, you don't really know. You don't really know. Y'all don't know. It's okay. How are we doing on Instagram? All right. Everybody's good, good over there. Okay, cool. I'm really excited, Evan. I'm streaming from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram today because I think today's information is just that important. Okay, moving on, people. I'm glad you guys are ready. We're app acclimating here. Let's go ahead and... um. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about the story behind the game. All right, so in the 1900s, originally, Monopoly was known as the landlord's game. Now, if you know, listen, let's put things into perspective. If you know today, hold on, let me hide this real quick so that uh, this is out of your way. I normally have background music and all that stuff. I didn't put any background music. I just jumped in here. <laughs> I just jumped right in here. I was like, boom, let's, boom, let's get going. All right. Keith has got a comment. I'm going to come back to that shortly. Um, definitely engage, drop your comments. I want you all to build and connect with each other as well. Shout out to my YouTubers, YouTube. Hey guys. All right. So in the 1900s and uh, specifically in 1906, Monopoly was known as the landlord's game. Okay. And I, I want to do this for some of you who might do screenshots. Mm. <clears throat> I don't always have to be on camera. And it was designed by Lizzie J. McGee Phillips. It was published in 1906 by the Economic Game Company in New York. There was a patent filed on May 23rd, 1903 by Lizzie and the patent was granted to Miss McGee on January 5th, 1904, right? And you, and, and let, me, let me come back in here real quick. I, I just wanna come back in here. Um, I wanna come back in here because I have talked about trademarking and copywriting and patents, right? Because here we're talking about a concept of a game. And, you know, I think about this, right? You know, King D, you know, I remember you and I were discussing concepts of game. You guys get these downloads and these phenomenal ideas, right? Especially if you are wanting to manifest millions and multi-millions in your lives, the creator, the universe, Allah, Buddha, Jesus, whatever you're calling your God force is gifting you, right? Is sending you those downloads for you to act on. What distinguishes you from the next multimillionaire billionaire is your ability to act on it. Is your ability to act on it and move forward. And so here we're talking about this concept from 1900s and here we're 2020. 2020, I got to show you this. 2020 and my son has a uh, monopoly Fortnite, the Fortnite version and this one says battle your opponents and avoid the storm but guess what i think that really placates or download or i would say downplays the true concept 
of what my son and all of you should be knowing. All right. I don't mind once you know how to play the game, you could, you know, do, you know, the little pet shop and all those other cute things, the Star Wars, Star Wars version and all that other stuff, but get the concept. But you can't get there if you don't know the history, right? <clears throat> okay. So then guess what? In 1935, Parker Brothers purchases the rights from Charles Darrow. And then in 1950s, new game pieces are introduced post World War II. Listen, wars create new opportunities. Let's remember this. Wars create new opportunities. So here we are, it was called the landlord's game. And I want to ask you all a question. If you today, as you know who you are, would you be playing Monopoly very differently if the name was called the landlord's game? Would you play Monopoly different if it was called the Landlord's Game? Press one for yes, two for no. Would you play Monopoly different if you were aware or knew or they sold it to you in the stores or it was sold online and it was known as the Landlord's Game? Yes? Would you play, play differently? King D says yes, he would play differently. Any more yeses? Press one for yes, two for no. Kanoon says yes, he would play differently. I love that because I feel like that's already, you know, we can get a little culture shock already, right? It's like, oh, okay, had I known it was called the landlord's game, I would be thinking about this differently. Keith Johnson says yes. I got a handful, I got a full class right now. So I expect a lot of a lot of engagement today. <laughs> Thank you for those who are sharing and please share it right now more than ever this concept, which is why I'm not charging for breaking down this concept right now is because I think it's it's more important for you to understand it so you can understand the world that is happening around you. We've always been at war in terms of real estate. It's always since the beginning of time. It's always been about land and human capital. What is human capital? You, your talent, your mind. Okay. So here we are. Here we are post 1950s and we have some game pieces that are being introduced. So I want to ask you, I want you to take a look at these game pieces and choose your game pieces. Remember which game piece and you make a note for yourself. If you're going to press one, you want to be the thimble. For those of you who have done this through the Black Billionaires Club, don't give it away. You might want to play differently today because you know me. When I do things, I always do it. I always spin on it. All right. So it's always, even though I may do something over and over, I'm always adding to it. It's, that's just me because I like new. I like fresh content. All right. So listen, press the number in the comments below. Choose your game pieces. Keith, he says eight. He's a battleship. Kanum, seven. He's missed the top hat. <laughs> And he, he actually loves wearing hats, too. So I could see that. All right. Um, so press one if you're going to be the thimble Two the wheelbarrow, three for the shoe, four for the Scotty dog, five for the roadster, six for the iron, seven for the top hat and eight for battleship. I should see a lot more numbers popping in. I'll give you a moment to think about it. I'll give you a moment to think about it. Choose your game pieces, please, so that we can play this game. We're not going to do the full game, but I do know that even from onset, right, you're playing. Miss Golden says five. She's the roadster. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. For those on YouTube, let me see. Um, I should have. Uh, uh, let me see. Who is this? Chiming in. Oh, hey, Tanisha. She says, hey, Miss Six. Yay, Lisa's back. I am back. I love it. Oh, you guys are, I love it. You guys noticed I was gone, huh? <laughs> I love it. Yes, and um, I will call you. We need to get together and get, get working. So uh, uh, Successful T says she's five. Uh, Miss Golden is five. Hey, Miss Phyllis. Miss Phyllis George is in the building. She's, uh, wait, wait a minute, five. Okay, I think you're picking uh, four for your game piece. And she says, one, I'm here and press and press two if you're shared it, right? So also for those of you who are on YouTube, 
you definitely can copy and paste that link. Just share the link over, you know, text them, you know, invite one more person to uh, learn, be empowered and play because some of you who are connected are desiring wealth. You're desiring to change your conditions. You're desiring to change um, what's going on in your lives and your children's lives and the, and the next next generation and so forth. But guess what? If we talked about to our children that the game of Monopoly was originally called the landlord's game, you will then understand, you will understand how to do things and how to operate, think and move differently in life. <clears throat> okay, everybody's got their game pieces. Some of you are just gonna watch, some of you are gonna play. Um, that's fine. Cause everybody's, you know, feeling like you, you don't want, you don't want anybody to know that you're here. <laughs> It's okay. All right. Okay. So got your game pieces? Cool. Remember which game pieces you selected, please. All right. Because we're going to be discussing that. All right. Based on those game pieces that you selected. Let's talk about definitions. Evan Jefferson, he says five. He's the, um, uh, let me go back to it. I'm going to give some of you some, 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 I'll give you one more, a little bit more time if you want to get in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. ERGJ says he's five. He is the roadster. Okay, I got a couple of roadsters. Okay, so let me go back. So Keith, you are you are the battleship. Kanum, you are the th uh, top hat. King D, you are the roadster. Great roadsters. I got a lot of roadsters in here. Miss Golden, Jacqueline, roadster. Phyllis George, she's the Scotty dog. And Evan, you are the roadster. All right, cool. Got good, good selections in here. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, let's talk about definitions, especially when we talk about the landlord's game, right? And then, right, it was redefined or renamed, retitled. This is why the this is why it's important that you understand words, right? Words the power of words, the power of vibration, breaking down definitions because they will empower you and they will give you more confidence on how you're relating, how you're effectively communicating with the world. But monopoly by definition here, for those of you who want to do a screenshot, a monopoly exists, listen to this, exists when a specific person or enterprise, right, entity or company, corporation, is the only supplier of a particular commodity. A monopoly exists when a specific person or enterprise is the only supplier of a particular commodity. Please drop in the comments below, only, only, type in the comments below, only almost lines up with exclusive exclusivity right why is this important why is it important to really understand here understand that monopoly is a game based on a specific person or enterprise controlling the supply how many of you watched american gangster i always talk about that blue magic of course i'm not a proponent of drug trafficking or any uh, anything anything of that sort but for concept purpose he ran a monopoly he was the only supplier of the blue magic because he went to you know far and beyond was it i forget where he went went i think it was cuba right where he went and he was getting this supply and he wasn't watering it down he was keeping it the way it was he was keeping it raw and he became the only supplier of that particular commodity. Let's apply it to uh, what we see here happening. Evan Jefferson and I discussed about the new approved list of hand sanitizers. Are you an approved distributor of this sanitizer that the they're now saying the fda is now saying there is now an approved list what is happening there is a monopoly that is being created for the suppliers of that commodity mask right n99 or n95 versus all the rest right there's only 
a supplier that can only deliver the right kind of mass to you. Let's talk about real estate. <laughs> there is only one owner or an entity that will allow you access to that particular real estate, albeit hotels, restaurants, bars, salons, stores, housing. There's one person or one enterprise that is controlling access to that commodity, in this case, land or real estate. If you have not read the book called The Unforgotten History, or let me excuse me, The Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America by Richard Rothstein, I recommend, I highly recommend you read that book. It's on my bookshelf right now and it's on the other side of me. Read that book. And that's why I say when you learn what is revolutionary, See, builders, we're talking about ex monopolies. How do monopolies exist? Builders who were developing tracts of homes and lands could not get insurance or government funding because it was prohibited for those builders to sell to black people. In fact, they had to build walls in communities to segregate those from the black residences and the white residences. All right. Kanum says, I'm reading The Color of Law now. Share your initial reaction in the first five pages. <laughs> Kanum says, per your suggestion. Thank you. I'm glad. Okay. All right. And today is not, it's not necessarily, you know, this is not about me bashing, that's not what I do on my platform. I educate and I empower. When you have more information, you are more empowered to make informed decisions. How we operate here is informed decision-making. Successful, successful T says, um, she says, please repeat the book title. It's called The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. <laughs> Kanum says, wow, was that first couple pages? He says, wow, is his initial reaction. I was on a plane to Atlanta when I was going to present for the We Buy Black conference. I was one of the speakers, guest presenters, and I was reading that book on the plane. And within the first 10 pages of reading that book, I was in tears. I was angered to find out how what I see today was intentionally done by enterprise, enterprise, i.e. government. Okay. She says, thank you. All right. This is why I say for those people who are wanting to get in real estate and you're a person of uh, your African ascent, a person of color, black, brown, whatever you are, I think it's important that you understand the history of real estate. When you say you want to advocate for people or you want to advocate for a community because real estate is more than just you selling and buying homes. There is a quote that says, he who has no land has no voice. He who has no land has no voice. And when we're looking at what's happening right now is right now they're in Congress. They're wanting to move a bill or pass a bill for a hundred million dollars for renter relief. See, the definition of a minority people in, the, in, in terms of government, you are termed a minority people is because minors cannot make decisions for themselves. How many of you have children, right? Children 18 and under, right? 17 and under are considered minors. Why? Because they cannot make decisions for themselves. Their brains are not fully developed. They themselves are not fully developed to understand and make decisions for themselves. So the government, when we talk about a majority people and a minority people, it has nothing to do with the color of your skin. 
It has nothing to do with the color of your skin when the government refers to you as majority or minority, because what they're saying is this is a people, this is a group of people, this is a demographic of people that cannot make decisions for themselves. That's why you are termed minority, because you are a minor. You're not thinking for yourselves. You're not acting for yourselves. All right. Did you feel that? Canoe said, say it again for the people in the back. <laughs> oh, that's how you know I'm back, you know. <laughs> See, <laughs> Canoe says, I love the way you're breaking this down. Minority, absolutely. Minor. So, you know, this is be careful when we're saying we're calling ourselves small business, right? My idea is grandeur. When I said that I'm an independent and I'm a business owner, I did not say I'm a small business owner. No, because what the universe has in store for me, <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> Same goes for you. We're talking about the power of word, words. We started off learning that this game Monopoly was originally called the landlord's game. And by your own admission, you all agreed and said, or I think most of you said, that if you knew the game was called the landlord's game, you would operate differently. You would play differently. And so as we talk about monopoly, we're talking about only the only supplier of a particular commodity. So when you get this concept rooted in anything you do, which is why Walmart was as big as it was, right? They had this model, the 88 cents model that they came and disrupted retail that they could sell something to you for 88 cents. They use that model and built an empire from that because they were the only supplier that was able to do that at that time until everyone else started to get hip to it. Think about the things that are doing well, i.e. Amazon, the only supplier. Now he's moving into getting his own planes, right? He already owns, does he Does he own the weather station? No, that's uh, uh, Byron. But I thought he owns something else that is very also connected to that as well. Again, ownership. What are you supplying to the people in exchange? My neighbor said this the other day. She said, fair exchange is no robbery. <laughs> I thought that was perfect. It's so perfect. All right, moving on. How are you feeling about that? Got that? Very good. So when you play, which side did you choose? Which side are you choosing? Are you, are you really choosing to win this game called Monopoly? Are you really choosing to win it? Are you choosing to be rich? Or are you choosing to be poor? Because here's the facts. This game was designed for the rich to play against the poor the poor to play against the rich. That's how this game was designed. It's called the landlord's game for a reason. Today it's called it's a monopoly and it's called, it's all pretty, it's colorful and we are missing the message because really what is in existence and this is historic, right? This was designed to educate the people. Lizzie was not on the rich side. Lizzie, was trying to empower the people so that they understood how land and real estate is dictating and controlling the lives of the poor. She was trying to wake some folks up. <laughs> so here we go. This is what the original board game looked like. For some of you who have never seen the original board game, this is what it looked like in the 1900s. Notice here in the right hand corner, and today I'm only going to corner to cover the four cor corners. We will cover the four corners, north, south, east, and west. We can cover foundation, right? The power of four. I have four hearts and four likes right now. Power of four right now tells me that I'm in alignment energetically because we are covering foundation. Four represents law. Right. That's why you see you hear people say I'm sitting on my square when Pharaoh 
know, sits in his chair, right? When the queen sits in her chair, they're sitting on foundation, the law, they are the law. So what I give you today, I'm going to give you a little bit of metaphysics, a little spiritual stuff, a little manifestation, a little law of vibration, a little frequency, because you need to know that you are what is activating a lot of what you see in this world. I, I trust that's okay with some of you. Some of you know my get down. Some of you might be new to me, but this is my get down, okay? Or my get up, okay? So how many by a show of hands are seeing the, the original Monopoly board game for the first time? Press one if yes, two if no. With the exception that you've seen me do this presentation in the other group, in the private group. But how many for the first time are seeing the original Monopoly board for the first time? How are we doing over here on my live? Okay, okay, good. I know uh, uh, for those of you on my Instagram, I'm not really engaging. I just want you to get this today. Press one if you're seeing this game, this board for the first time. Two, if no, you've seen it before. Kanoom says one, got it. All right, one. Actually, I feel like I should do it this way. Let me know. I'm going to give you a moment to type in. And a lot of maybe what I'm sharing, like I said, may feel overwhelming today. I implore you to join me tonight on Spitting Policies with some kings at 8 o'clock. We'll go live. You can call in. And let's continue this. Let's build on this. Today, I'm giving you the law. These four corners, this board, because this board game could be designed in a circle. This board game could be like shoots and ladders, right? It can be, you know, all which away. It could be in different ways. But do represent, do know that there is so much in, in what we see and what we experience that has true meaning. Okay, so these four corners here is representing the law. This is foundation. And it is that more important that these pieces are in the four corners. Okay, we're going to break down these pieces today. So King D says, yes, one, he says, first time he's seeing the original Landlord's Game. Miss Successful T says, yep, first time I'm viewing it. Kanoon says, one, Reggie, Cy Turner says, yes. Or Reg Cy Turner, he says, one, yes, first time I'm seeing the original Landlord's Game. Rwanda, Ron, Rwanda Ray, Ray, thank you. Beautiful picture. Says, yes. So, uh, first time I'm seeing it. Hey, Keith, welcome back. He says, sorry, I'm bad. No worries. Welcome back. The question posed here, is this the first time you are seeing the original Monopoly board? Okay, it's here on my screen. This is the entire board game. This is the entire board game here, broken down. And right now, we're going to talk about the first corner, right hand. Thank you all for engaging, too. I really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> we're right. We're running right on schedule. We're going to finish up because I'm going to start to speed it up because I'm setting the stage and the tone for what I'm going to do. If you really want to keep building on this discussion, I suggest you hit the link that Kanum dropped um, on in our Facebook chat. And some of you have text that link as well. Check out Spitting Policies tonight. We're going to continue to build this discussion because right now, while we have the attention, right, there's an attention happening, right, that is being given or granted. So what is next, right? What is next in terms of economic power? And we're going to talk about the power of property. And this is why it's so funny because Kanum honestly did not know I had done this two weeks ago. He did not know I was debuting this again today because it was in my spirit. Shout out to Evan Jefferson. He wanted me to come. He said, you got to talk about the real life game of Monopoly. And I said to myself, how do I do that online? Right? Because most people you're used to playing this game. So I said, how do I do this online? And this is how we're going to do it. 
Um, I have a, uh, so Miss Successful T says, which flat platform will tonight's live stream be on? YouTube, Facebook. It will be on Facebook. There's a link if you're. Um, I'll I'll set I'll text it to you. Uh, Spit and policies is where we'll be. Keith says, text me the link. Awesome, great, appreciate you. Would love to see you on the other side to continue this because we're talking about foundation right now. You guys come out here and just playing a game, and you think you're playing a game when this game, in fact is dictating whether you're going to win in life because why it was founded on the basis of the rich versus poor. Do you feel right now in 2020, right? I'm dating the show right now. Do you feel right now that we are in an environment of the haves versus the have not? The haves versus the have not, right? Because we just saw a spurt of a, of a generation that were becoming millionaires like that, right? through technology like that, e-commerce, uh, influencers, all this injustice, and we're looking at it, it has nothing to do with, again, color and the ageism or anything like that. But you're talking about a people or a person desiring something in their lives that they are manifesting that. That is that energy. That's the currency happening right now. This is the currency that is happening right now. But guess what? When the money dried up like it did just now, because what, 4.3 million people unemployed, half the population is uh, really confused. We're now relying on, on government, right? Because now if you are a minority people and you have not have uh, multiple streams of income to supplement losing maybe your primary income or you, you, know, you, you, you thought your side hustle was your hobby when in fact it should have been your focus, that's what we're seeing, right? We're now relying and there are people who still don't have their stimulus check. So let's give you an example of your stimulus check. This piece right here called collect your wages. For those of you who are like, woohoo, I passed go. Why are you so excited about passing go to get $200? That is your stimulus check today. Not want to do anything, right? Your unemployment, they just gave you another $600. Why are you so excited? What you are saying to yourself, you are confirming your position as a minor, minority, as a minority people, because you are dependent on, oh, I can't wait to pass go. So on this board here, notice this piece says what? Mother Earth produces wages. Labor upon Mother Earth produces wages. I don't think y'all really, I don't think you really understand the significance of what this is saying right now. Wow. Can I get a wow? Mother, listen, labor upon Mother Earth produces wages. The game piece says start from here. Start from here. Some children have an economic advantage, right? Because they don't have to start from here. If this game is played correctly, what do you think happens? An inheritance is passed on. They will never depend on circling around this board to collect their wages of $100. Instead, they could set up shop anywhere and they will wait for you to pay them. What is that called? It's called rent. Rent. Labor upon Mother Earth produces wages. Does that feel a little bit different? Instead of pass and go, collect your 200, you pass go. Does that resonate differently? Again, if we play the landlord's game today, the way this game is played, and we have to start here, and I've got to work to go on to the next piece, right? Collect your wages, $100. Moving on, next piece. Gonna, we're gonna move along the board. We're now in the left-hand corner. What does it say? Shelter, shelter. Not a home, not an apartment, just shelter. It says an, is an absolute necessity. I'm not making this stuff up. This is not Lisa making up the game or making up the rules. This is saying that shelter 
housing is an absolute necessity. Guess what the taxes are? $10. That is your due when you land on this piece. Pay up. Oh, did you think it was by accident that on the other side of shelter is the jailhouse? <laughs> well, look at that. You can pay $10 or it's free to go to jail, right? No, it's still not free. Is this by accident? Do you think by design that shelter and the jailhouse share the same space? Come on now, y'all awfully quiet now. Or, or are you just that shocked right now that the game of Monopoly you've been playing has been played in this way, was originally played this way? Okay. So I'm, today, again, we're covering the four corners of the original landlord's game. Moving on. So there is no accident. I'm, I'm showing this to you that housing and the jailhouse share the same space because here notice the difference is that if you're an owner you'd be owning some of the spaces in between you're not relying on trying to land on the shelter Whew. right because every space you go you pay you pay you pay and then you get to shelter and you say oh okay cool it's just ten dollars oh it's just ten dollars and then how many times maybe have you heard, I know I've heard it in some people say, I'd rather be locked up because it's free. I get fed a meal three times a day. I go out to exercise and I'm not downplaying the experiences of prison. By no means, I am not doing that. And I'm not being insensitive to um, you know, what, what prison has done or represented for our communities. But here I'm talking about mindset because if you had to come out in the world and work or you're not getting work and everywhere you go, you have to pay to play, pay to play, pay to play. What do you think that drives a person to do? Crime, nuisance, delinquency, right? Just to end up on the other side of the game, game board. Just to end up on the other side. Cause you're like, all right, cool. If I'm jail, I, you know, I ain't got it anyway. So red side says says mouth wide open okay canoon says three meals and a cot three meals and a cot pay to play and when you started here in the corner what did it say labor upon mother earth produces wages because why that's a programming that's a programming that you have to come out here and work, right? Labor away. And there's a difference. There are people who are paid to use their minds and there are people who pay for their, their human capital, their labor. Actually, absolutely. It does reference jail, three meals in a cot. I'm, I, listen, I'm with you. I said it, right? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you got a you got a you got a place to lay your head. And what I've recently learned with as uh, this current administration is doing is is doing prison reform. What I've recently learned is uh, that they're wanting to dismantle corporations from owning uh, uh, prisons, from having prisons being privately owned, and also they're wanting to undo the fact that there's a quota that is to be met for funding of those prisons, meaning they have to have certain bodies in those beds to fund those prisons. That's a whole nother discussion, but it's on the game board. Is this not real life already? Right? You guys kind of laugh. I mean, we laugh about it and say, oh, you had to go to jail. Ha, ha, ha. But guess what? If we were playing the landlord's game and we were playing it the way we're really playing in a game in, in life, you might have a different perspective. You might feel a little, you might feel different. Moving on, next piece. My next corner says what? The poor house or the park. You either live in the poor house or you live in the park, right? Central Park free. Um, homelessness is close to my family. I do know people who have experienced 
that, who who um, have been in that um, situation. I mean, and I think for the most part, we all know someone who knows someone, right? The degree of separation went from six, de six degrees to two degrees. The degree of separation for life in the poorhouse or life just in Central Park, right? Because I'm playing this game and I'm laboring away and every piece I land on, I have to pay. Thank goodness I've landed on Central Park. It's free. Woo. Ah. Woo I made it. How many of you play that game? You, you know the game piece that says free parking? That's what this piece is. That's this piece on the board game. They've just been... They've just been redefined in the new versions, right? This is the jail in the far, uh, far, la far left corner, right? This is the jail right here. And then this is the free parking. But in this case, it's called the poor house. Because if you're so thankful to finally reach free parking, you may not have the best situation. You may not have the best situation if you are looking forward to landing on this game piece. How are we feeling about this so far? Poor house, Central Park, it's free. Thanks for sharing it. Thank you for letting me know you're here. If you're just chiming in, I appreciate you. Go ahead and watch the replay. I'm going to sit this on the timeline. I will not expire this episode. Uh, because I think it's just that important. I appreciate all of you chiming in and playing because remember you have chosen your game pieces. You were playing along with me, okay? Because we're going around the board. I don't know if you ever read the rules of the game, right? Some of us, we just jump in and we play. Oh, just give me the money. I, I'm going to play. I'm going to win. And then you say you want to go buy the most expensive property. That's a mindset. You want to go buy the most expensive property. Why? When you can build a portfolio of properties to leverage, turn that in and then get the hotel, right? You can't build on the land until you own all the colors in that land. Then you put the house. You can't get a hotel until you put three, uh, all the houses. Once you put the houses, then you change the portfolio for the buildings. But most of you get on here and you want to go straight to Park Place. You want to go straight to boardwalk. Why? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Moving on. <laughs> Our fourth corner says Lord Blue Blood's estate. No trespassing. If you trespass, you're going to jail because who's the owner? Lord Blue Blood. Lord Blue Blood is the owner. More than likely, Lord Blue Blood is the owner by what we call aggressive takeover. An aggressive takeover is something very real in today's real estate. For those of you who are unfamiliar with this, it shows up by way of someone taking over a property them turning on the utilities in their name and them living there consecutively for a period of anywhere from six months to a year or more, they can claim rights to your property as an aggressive takeover. If they start maintaining that property, paying the utilities on that property, paying the property taxes on that property. Be very mindful, my people, those of you who have owners and those of you who do this because you're playing a game, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let the world know about your secret. Okay. When someone comes in and they want to pay your property taxes, I'll pay your property taxes. Don't worry. Or better yet, they say, you give me cash and I'll pay it for you. You need help paying it. If they show that they are paying your property taxes consecutively for three years or more, they can pursue rights to your property. These are real estate concepts that are very well and alive. 
Just look at the tax assessor's office. When property taxes go delinquent for five years, that property goes up for sale. Was that new information for some people about property taxes? And in some states, I think it's even a cold, colder game. Here's the cold game. They attach your utility bills to your property, meaning if you default on your utility bills, I think this is Detroit. If you default on your utility, they can sell your property. Grandma says, I'm watching. Hello. I just left her this morning. I'm glad you're tuning in. If they pay your utility bills, it's very important because, see, I'm talking about Lord Blue Blood's estate who has come and done an aggressive takeover of land that more than likely was not his. But guess what? We know the concept of police, right? Police, policing was about protecting property. From who? From the people that was trying to get it back. And now laws are enacted and now it's called no trespassing. If you trespass on the land that I've aggressively taken from you, you're going to jail. And then there's this thing called bond. You have to pay it, but you have no money. So you're stuck. And then the cycle continues. The cycle continues privately owned, right? Policing, privately owned, jails or imprisonments. Those who are aggressively taking over land, monopolizing the land, being the only supplier of those necessities, albeit food, water, shelter. How you feeling? I need to I need to know. I need to know how we're feeling right now, okay, before I move on. Kanum says, yes, policing is to protect the land owners. As we're talking and uncovering, right? We're unveiling. I think I'm channeling the spirit of Khalid Muhammad. <laughs> unveiling because I was watching a video and he was talking about un unlifting the skirt of the Pope because, and I've said this on my last show, Catholicism was responsible for funding slavery. So if we, again, we're talking about monopolizing. We're talking about the church, right? The church in terms of IRS code is tax exempt from paying property taxes. So the church owns a lot of your neighborhood stores and houses. Who can tell you that? The title officer, your real estate broker, your agent can tell you that. I pull, I pull title on, on my geographic farm, on areas and communities that I market to. I can tell you how many properties the church owns in that, pro, in that community. Matter of fact, they get annoyed when I always reach out to them. Right? Like, oh, how she know we own this? <laughs> Your Baptist church, your uh, uh, Pentecostal, your Episcopal, your, you know, your uh, <laughs> Calvary, your Catholic this, your Adventist that. Why? Because when they write their articles and bylaws, in the bylaws, you can own property in your corporations as long as your bylaws stipulate that you can do that. And if you file and you are recognized by the IRS to be a tax exempt organization and you've incorporated that that um, that your corporation can own property or own real estate, then you are just following suit with the IRS tax code to be property uh, to be exempt from paying property taxes. If you are exempt from paying property taxes and you continue to own in that that uh let's see you know that umbrella that corporation that entity what what do you think happens you're just benefiting and you keep buying more property under that guise universities are tax exempt usc is a prime example of all that tax exempt land and all they're doing is pushing out further east further south Kanum says, is the church a part of the oppression? Oh, I ask you, I ask you all, is the church 
part of the oppression. Because remember, for some of you who are not privy to history, the Catholic Church also gave out a slave Bible. There was a Negro Bible is what they called it. It was very specific and tailored to the enslavement and the programming of the minds of the people who were enslaved so that they would not rise up against their slave owners or the slave owners. There are two separate Bibles. Mind you, there are already uh, about 50,000 versions of the Bible. And I'm again, I'm not bashing. We're just talking about history. It's important for you to understand and understand this so that you can overstand the world around you. I'm completely sensitive to everybody's spiritual practice and whatever your faith is. I think we should put that into consideration in context of what we are seeing and living today. Why some people will go up to, they will fight you over religion because that is embedded and rooted in them since the beginning. That is rooted in you because there's different biblical texts for you to think that way. All right. Just get out and read more books. <laughs> Has nothing to do with what your faith is. It's get out and be a learned person. Isn't that the term? Be a learned person. All right. I lovingly say all this. All right. How are you feeling about this? Oh, man. <laughs> We're talking about 1906, y'all, and here we are, 2020. I don't think this game has really changed much. By a show of hands, do you think the game has changed much from 1906 to 2020 in real life? One for yes, two for no. Miss Jacqueline says, wow. Am I, is that what's happening? Because y'all awfully quiet here. <laughs> I, you know I love you. This is why I'm doing this. I have to love you, which is why I'm doing this. All right, cool. Kanum says two. No. The question is, has the game changed from 1906 to 2020? When we're talking about the landlord's game or monopoly, has it changed? One for yes, two for no. Brad says, says yes. Jacqueline says two, no. I think it depends. It depends on what you know, what part have you been experiencing it, right? How you've been experiencing this game. You may say, oh, no, it's changing. You may say right now as you're watching a people or a community, we're in a renaissance. We're seeing a rising right now. We are in a great rising right now. So you may say, oh, man, the game has changed. <laughs> you may say the game has changed. It's changing. We are in a great rising right now, right? Ray says, oh, sorry, I meant to. He says, no has not changed. Kanum adds, he says, only the players have changed. Exactly. The players have changed. When I said, and I described the minority people and the, and the majority people talking about public versus private government involved with that. What am I saying? I'm not saying, uh, you know, I'm not referencing people in terms of color, right? Who you are on in, in the exterior. I'm saying the roles that you are playing. What role are you playing? Okay. We've covered the four pieces today. The four the four pieces of the, of the board. We have covered that today. So let's talk about this. As we look in today's game. Notice those pieces is pass go, right? On right hand. In the original game, it was called what? $100 for your wages. Labor upon Mother Earth produces wages. And then we go on and we keep trotting on along the board uh, clockwise, right? Counterclockwise, it says. And then we get to either just visiting or jail. It's either just visiting or jail. We keep trotting along, we keep trotting along along the board game. 
uh, right? And then we go up here, whoo, free parking, right? Are you the player that are you saying, whoo, I made it to free parking? Are you not the player excitedly picking up properties? Are you not the player excitedly paying your income tax, right? Because I haven't even broken down the, the, the chance cards and the community cards. These are the action cards. I haven't even broken that down. Stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned, right? What about the utility company, right? You trotting down, trying around. You, you want the community chess card. You want the action cards. Instead of being strategic on how you're playing this game, you go, ooh, I made it to free parking. And I'm saying this facetiously because some of you are living life like this, truth be told. Some of you are saying, Whoa, oh man, a stimulus check. Oh man, a stimulus check came in. You are dependent on it. And I ask you, what have you been doing with your talents so that you can monetize your talents? You came here with a gift. The world needs it. That way you're not depending on this second wave of stimulus check. If you get it, that's nice. If you don't, that's nice too because you shouldn't be skipping a beat. You should not be skipping a beat. Now, if you're on here, you're on here for a reason. If you're listening to today's uh, show, class, presentation, you're on here for a reason because guess what? You can only be in present or in front of the teacher when you are ready. Class is full right now. I appreciate you. And most people say, man, everybody should be learning this. Everybody should be hearing it. But I love to say it like this. If you knew you did not have to go to work until six o'clock in the evening, how would you feel if somebody was waking you up at two o'clock in the morning? If you didn't have to go to work till six o'clock in the evening, but somebody say, oh man, you gotta get up, get dressed, let's go at two o'clock in the morning, how would you feel? you would be upset, you would be frustrated, you would be anxious, you would be irritated. Then the same goes for when someone is going through their own awakening, their own evolution, their own personal growth. Everybody awakens at the time they are to awaken. So when you're on here now and you're vibing and you're listening to today's messages because it is time for you to hear it. It is by no accident. It is by no coincidence. It is time for you to have heard today's message. Because there are whole other people that say, well, now what? I mean, aren't we watching this? I watched, I watched a young lady do a strip dance in front of the police during the Black Lives Matters protests. She did a full on display and performance. full-on display performance. And some people say, oh, my people, my people, and they get upset and this and that. Guess what? Everybody is awakening at the time they are to be awakened. If you're, it's not, it's not your time to go to work yet, right? If it's not time for you to go to work, then you're not going to be getting up. <laughs> Kanum says, we are so elated that you share your gift. Thank you. And I know you always say that to me personally. So thank you. I received that. I appreciate you. Evan says, super agent, super agent, super agent. <laughs> I've been on my journey, right? This rabbit hole is so deep. Ooh, so deep. <laughs> so the chance pieces, the chance pieces also is what? Are we creating opportunities? We're leaving it up to chance. This ties in with your gifts. I did a whole 16 classes, the Entrepreneur Series. I did 16 free classes when this whole pandemic hit and people were feeling flustered. And what did I go? I went into creation mode. When you move and you're energy and motion, right? That's when opportunities meet you. They don't come to you sitting around, waiting here, parked at free parking, because guess what? When you're playing this game, you can't stay here forever. You cannot stay at free parking forever. You've got to be energy in motion. That is what emotion is. 
your emotion. And when you have emotional intelligence, then, only then, can you play this game and you can watch the programming that is happening in the TV and on the media and on the radio. Then you can be discerning. Then you can decipher. Because as long as it is dictating and controlling your emotion, this is your, your emotional intelligence about things, then logic is removed. You no longer are moving logically. You're no longer moving strategically. Because you sit and waiting, you at free parking. You're waiting for something to happen. Be your own action card. Aggressively hit this game board aggressively hit this board and say, listen, what's the game plan? Look at how much each piece is cost on the board. For some of you who have been upset about gentrification, right? But not how many, I mean, the home buyer workshops have not been packed out. You're not packing out the home buyer workshops like you are packing out the stadiums and the concerts. You're not packing out those workshops where there's free information, free game being told. You're being given money. The state of California, as a matter of fact, all states in the United States give grant money. There's grant money. As a matter of fact, today we'll be closing a deal, a duplex for a client of mine who used grant money, got $20,000 in grant money to purchase. We closed one two weeks ago, single family, grant money to purchase. What do we need to do? We keep asking this question, what, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Listen, we've been saying this for years. I've been showing it. I've been teaching it. I've been doing it. Been giving you access to that. But you think because it's not shiny, it's not shiny. You don't want to do it. It doesn't glitter. You don't want to do it. Oh, it's not pretty, Lisa. It's not pretty enough. It's not pretty. It needs work. It needs TLC. Please drop it down in the comments below. TLC. I'm going to teach you something. <laughs> TLC. Jacqueline says, be your own action card. Quoting me today. I think that was a good one, huh? That was a good one. <laughs> drop in the comments below. TLC. Because apparently we have, we, we, we've got to really have this discussion on TLC. My life, my life, my phone died. So the Instagram people lost it. Oh, well, make sure you're subscribed to YouTube at LA Super Agent and Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash LA Super Agent. Be sure you subscribe. My phone has died now. So, but I don't know how much they got. I trust they got, uh, you know, enough, right? TLC, come on now, type in TLC. Type in TLC. As we're talking about momentum, what is happening today, understanding the world, understanding yourself to overstand the world around you, understand yourself to overstand the world around you. Type in the comments below, TLC. Hey, Antoine, super proud of Antoine. Man, he studied the game and he jumped in the game. He's now wholesaling, holding his properties. And even that, right? You wholesale or you flip properties to build capital, but eventually you hold the property to build legacy. There is a difference. And there's such a difference that it is treated differently on your taxes. The IRS has a tax code about this. When someone says, I'm an investor, oh, I'm an investor, great. What do you do? What do you do? You know, what is what is your preferred mix, right? What is your preferred mix? When I ask my clients that or my investors that I work with, they'll tell me I like the two ones, two twos, three twos, three ones, right? What are they communicating? What portfolio style they prefer? And they usually are very clear about it. They're clear about how many doors they want, how much each door is going to pay them. What does that mean? How much rent they're going to collect from each door? I want this door paying me $500 or I'm okay with getting $100 off of 10 doors. You've got to be clear about that. Red says TLC. All right. Some of the, listen, cl class is full. I should see a lot more comments here with TLC. <laughs> TLC, drop in the comments below. TLC. Because you know why? 
we are pray, we are afraid we are afraid we are afraid I, I really let's talk about this tlc we are afraid of the tender love and care tender love and care this is actually how real estate is described for some of these properties We've got to be a little bit tender with ourselves, loving on ourselves and care for ourselves. You know how that shows up? By the actions of what we're doing, how we're allocating our resources and our money. Are we living above our means? Are you being tender with yourself? I'm going to ask you, are you being tender with yourself? How do you do that? Right. Being budget conscientious, not living above your means, not worrying about what Mrs. Jones has over there. Mr. Jones has over there. Be tender and kind to yourself. That shows up in us being mindful about how we are allocating our resources. How do we love ourselves? How do we love ourselves? Right. We use our talents and our gifts to monetize. I shout out to Miss Carolyn. She says fair exchange is no robbery. Because before there was currency, before there was money put into circulation in this capitalistic country, what were we doing as a people before? I'm not wearing them today, but I used to wear, uh, I, I love cowrie shells. I wear cowrie shell jewelry, uh, you know, I bracelets and I have, you know, many different accessories for cowrie shells because cowrie shells were an original ancient form of money. So yeah, I I wear it because I'm I I do that specifically to activate that energy of currency, activate that energy of ancient money around me. But guess what's happening? We're not really loving on ourselves is because we went from being property, right, as an enslaved group for those of us who've experienced or our ancestors experienced that, and then we became the group of people that wore the property, right? Big gold chain, big oopty earrings. We put in big, you know, $1,500, $2,000 rims on our cars. And I've heard the psyche about this before because it's easier and quicker to get the car than it is to get the property. Jacqueline says, absolutely. Are you budget conscientious? Are you budget conscious? That's loving on yourself. That's the tender part. Some people are afraid of that word budget. It just means living in between your means is very easy, very easy formula of how to accumulate wealth. You don't spend more than you make. You don't spend more than you earn. Needs versus wants. Do you realize that commercial real estate is being impacted like never done before? There is litigations that are happening right now across the country because Gap is closing down their stores. They cannot hold up their contract lease agreements. There will be a lot of commercial buildings that will end up being foreclosed on because right now the question is who does the government save? The minority people, the majority people. Who is the government going to save? As we know, everybody needs help, right? A hundred million dollar relief to renters, because guess what? They're saying if the renters can't pay the rent to the owners, the owners can't pay the rent, can't pay their agreements or their agreed upon contracts for interest on money they borrowed to the investors. If the investors don't get the money, guess what? Politically, there is no funding because the investors are funding your puppeteers. The people in policy are your faces, but it is the investors that are funding the rules of the game. Notice that the rules change. Did you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with my show, I talked about how the rules for appraisals change just like that, boom. They said, oh, the appraisers don't have to come out and look at the property. They can do a desktop appraisal. What does that mean? They just research online. They compare values, make some adjustments, and that's an appraisal. Just like that, appraisals change. Guess what? They said the FICO score. Oh, my gosh. We need to change the FICO score. Change. Just like that. 
down payment requirement. Banks said they are not, your big banks, so they're not giving loans to any new customers. And if you're a new customer, you need to bring 20% to the table. Rules change just like that. Who's changing those rules? The investors. Are you thinking with an investor mindset? Because this game, when we talk about the landlord's game, is the rich versus poor. Community chests. Just said, listen to that word, community chest, right? It's for, it's for everybody. How I don't think you hear me though. Tender love and care. And you know, the care part is, do you care enough to do something about your situation? Do you care enough to do something about your situation? Today, you may watch this and it may feel good. And you may say, oh man, that was, that was good. But will you actually do something about it? So let's talk about your game pieces. If you held any of these game pieces, you were holding tools of the wealthy mindset is everything i always tell people when they want to get in real estate and you want to learn real estate is a mindset why is because the architecture and the development of any piece of real estate started in the mind first somebody had to envision it before they put it on blueprint energy emotion energy in motion I will say that again for the people in the back. Real estate is a mindset because anything in existence today as a tangible piece of real estate started in the mind of its creator that was then manifested by way of pen, right? By way of drawing, writing it down, bringing it out of the spiritual into the physical realms, bringing it out to the spiritual realm into the physical realms as a full manifestation via blueprinting. I'm dealing with the city of LA building and safety department right now and permits and building records right now. They have the building records. And as premature the drawings were, they were still drawings. Here's this, something like this, right? It's not fancy. This back in the 1920s, this would have been considered a permit, a, a, a building blueprint and the city stamps it and approves your record. There you go. Go ahead and do your addition, your add-on. Kanum says property mindset. So how many of you actually chose a game piece that resonated with wealth? When we talk about the cards that we're being dealt, are you, are you action-oriented? Are you thinking differently? Are you coming into this game with a mindset to win? Some of us are afraid of money. We say things like, oh, I eat poor people's food or, you know, what, what, all, what all, all those other sayings that, you know, is common, commonly associated with, with, with poor and, and being deprived. So the Roadster was Mr. Top Hat's expensive car. This is 1920s Roadsters, right? The battleship is why? Is because men, gentlemen, Esteemed men, elite men are the men that create wars for money. They're not, what to say? Uh, war is a uh, old man's game and a, a young man's fight or something like that, right? The young men are sent to go fight the war, but the, the, the elites, the gentlemen, the Mr. Top Hats and the, the first ladies of the Top Hats, this is a sport. These are tools of the wealthy for what? Resources and supplies. I've been privy to some information as we're talking about development for, as I think about battleship, why is as on the onset of wars, why are we moving in that direction, especially with um, the militarization now, we're, we're now developing a space military. We're developing a space military. Let's go back to what the definition of monopoly meant, right? a one person or an enterprise controlling, right? Being the only supplier of a, of a commodity. So think about that as you're, we're thinking about this and what's happening and we're seeing race wars happening right now for space. That's what, what's happening. Race wars right now, developing equipment and tools and technology to monopolize and control space.
All right. Scotty Dog was the dog for the rich. If you were rich, you had a Scotty Dog. You had that cute little Scotty Dog. Okay. Let's get back to, let's move forward. Now, if you chose the iron, I'm going to get to your comment right now, Reg. If you chose the iron, the shoe, the thimble, or the wheelbarrow, you chose tools of the poor. Could you imagine, and this is actually, this is actually a, a technique. Uh, for those of you who are in sales or entrepreneurs or in business, this is a technique when you're wanting to break into a culture and a culture is not necessarily uh, a dynamic in terms of like people and uh, in terms of like skin color or music. Culture can be a culture of, let's say, people who um, earn a certain amount of money, right? Classism, if you will, right? If you want to break into a culture of people that deal with technology, right? Coders, per se. Um, and here's the thing. They can tell whether you belong in that group sometimes by the way you dress, right? You have a pocket protector. The style of your glasses, the brand of your glasses, the brand of your watch. And I'll give you an example that it just really was profound to me. Because for those of you men on here who love watches, it is very telling. And, and I don't know if this is you've ever heard this before, but there is levels to watch collections. And it actually resonates with the amount of money or wealth that you have. It's also uh, presented in a way of rich versus poor, uh, rich versus poor, because Rolexes is considered the bottom of watch collections. Some people who are of elite class would not be caught even considering that. And it's very telling if you walk into a room and you're flashing your watch and depending on the style of watch and the brand of watch, you are communicating what side of this game you're playing. Same with these tools, right? Picking the iron. This was this is this is what they did for money, right? Ironing clothes, washing clothes. You were the shoemaker. You made shoes. Thimble was a symbol of a passage of right for young girls when they turned twelve. The poor girls were given a thimble because then they would be sewing clothes, right? A lot of us have parents and grandparents who know how to get down with sewing clothes. And we can still transfer those skills and talents to design and to distribution and manufacturing, but we have not. We have not gone from the laborer to the manufacturer, to the distributor. We haven't quite transitioned there. All right. So Reg says, wow, I choose the shoes because I felt I wanted to put that footwork in to gain wealth. <laughs> guess what? I feel you. I feel you. But even the perspective, and this is why I had a problem when people were talking about paper chasing, money chasing, because here how it works. You really want to know the truth about how money operates? Money loves happy people. And money is currency. That's energy. So if you're saying to the world and to your subconscious mind that you are paper chasing, what you are saying is you don't have it. You are communicating that you don't own it, that you don't have it. So wealth is not something you gain. Wealth is something you have. I'll say that again. Wealth is not something you gain wealth is something you have and then the law of frequency the law of vibration the law of magnetism these are universal principles magnetize the opportunities to you because you own it already you say i got this it may be in everybody else's bank account but it's coming to mind right so the question is if you are preparing this do you have your money market account? Do you have your brokerage accounts? Do you have your saving accounts? Do you have your checking accounts? Do you have your dividend accounts? 
or you just sitting there with a check-in because they gave you a deal. They said, if you open a checking account, you know, and told 10 people, they give you a hundred dollars. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. Some, uh, some of you know, I'm not a proponent of that bank. I have, oh man, <laughs> not even going to bring their name up on my show. But, oh, we supporting the movement. We're supporting the cause. You tell your 10 friends, we'll give you $100. And I know that people have to get to the levels of even opening up bank accounts. But if you're talking about wealth, that means where's your brokerage account? Where's your money market account? You should have an account for different aspects of what you're doing in life. I got a comment in here. Okay, bring it back in. Empress, Empress Male. I know that's my sis Trinity. She says, yes, levels to status signals your elk. Right? You're being so flashy. You're wearing what you don't own and what you don't have. Mark Zuckerberg wears the same black T-shirt or wears black. I'm sure Gap or whoever sends him some name brand company sends him a case or box of black T-shirts so he doesn't have to wash or wear another black T-shirt a day in his life. He just has a lifetime of black T-shirts and denim jeans. Right. I've been privy to because of my experience in my family, my upbringing, that I've seen the wealthy throw away good, good clothes. They wear it one time and throw it away. That's wealth. There's levels to this. Some of us are afraid of it. And it's showing in how we are playing this game. What piece did you choose? The wheelbarrow, that right there is just, that's just labor. Kanum is adding, he adds, and he pretty much agrees. He says, that is so true with the watch. He says, teach goddess. This is what I'm doing. I know we're going a little bit over, but we're going to wrap it up shortly. Thank you all for hanging in here. Appreciate you. <laughs> Ray says, damn, damn. <laughs> Kanum <laughs> says, money flows to me easily and effortlessly, right? Absolutely. My clients and customers love paying me for what I do because they value and respect and need my services. What are you saying to yourselves? That TLC we talked about, that tender love and care, that when you see a property, you say, oh, it needs work. I don't want to live there. I don't want to live there. You know, it's called a bucket of paint. It's called landscape job. It's called little trim and staging, right? <laughs> That's what it's called. If I go in there, my team goes in there, redo, redo it. Guess what? Now we're going to have to charge you sixty to 80000 more for the same property because you didn't want to do a little tender love and care because you're afraid to put in the work. You want it ready made instead of doing a sweat equity. Antoine says, preach, Lisa. I'm a young billionaire. Yes, you are. He says, thank you for this. You're going in. I love it. You, you feel me, huh? I'm, I, I, I do feel I am going in. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I am going in. So I guess it is coming off that way. Uh oh, uh oh, Red says, light bulb just went off for me. Thank you so much, Queen. You are welcome, King. You are welcome. I, I'm, I'm glad whoever shared it with you. I'm glad you're connected. Now you know that's what it's about. That's why I say, you know, share it. Not everybody's waking up at the same time. All you can do is share the information. When they are ready to receive it, they'll be ready. That's why we call this ready, set, real estate. You got to be ready. <laughs> You've got to be ready. Okay. So now let's talk about the absolute necessity since we're talking about commodities and the supplier because you know when i watch ergj he's making a killing he i mean he had a record month supplying masks 
I'm not going to I'm not going to share publicly how much he earned. If he's on, he could drop in a comment what his record month was in supplying masks, y'all, because he recognized a necessity. Have things changed since the 1900s? Food, clothing, shelter, and fuel. If you're asking yourself, what should I invest in? I want to be a millionaire. I want to have money. I want to be wealthy. I want to be a billionaire. And you're asking yourself, what kind of stock should I have? What should my portfolio look like? If they fit in this category, you'll be good. Food, clothing, shelter, fuel. And fuel is transforming, not just from gas to now energy. Or these electric cars and all this other stuff they're wanting to move, move forward. You know, that's what space is about. Space, you're talking about the cosmos, has so many elements that's not even on the periodic table. Because we as a human beings, we're still in our infancy, in our ability, but yet we are so ignorant thinking that we are the only life form in existence in, in a galaxy that has galaxies and super galaxies. We're the only species that is so ignorant to think that we are the only life form that is capable of this. And yet, if we look historically and look at how pyramids were built and the science that was being developed, the pyramids had helicopters before helicopters were witnessed in the United States. Our ancestors already knew that. They had tools for surgery, for um, obstetrics, right? Gynecology and, and uh, surgery for uh, giving birth and all, come on, man. All kinds. I mean, they were, they were studying the brain, I'm talking about tools, technology. And yet we are the species that is so ignorant to think that we are the only life form in a super galaxy. Okay. Uh, moving on. <laughs> so which side do you choose now? When we're playing this game, you now from now on, you somebody say you want to play Monopoly? What are you choosing to do? Poor? You mm -hmm. play poor? Which game pieces are you grabbing? Right? Because some of us already are starting off at a disadvantage. At least grab the right game pieces. What does the right game pieces look like to you in your life? The right broker, the right team, the right investor, the right pool, right? location, financial planner, my advisors, my insurance broker, my holistic doctor, my primary care physician, my therapist. What pieces are you choosing? Y'all don't hear me though. All right. Listen, this was fun. Thank you for playing. Please drop in the comments down below from a scale of one to 10. One being it needed work today, wasn't all that exciting, it was boring. 10 being excellent that you would share and let people know. Please let me know from a, a scale of one to 10 how I did today. Uh, rate the content in today's information. And I trust that I will see you next week. But more importantly, if you want to, I'm going to go in tonight with Spitting Policies with my, my brothers on their platform. It's their platform there. Uh, and I'm coming on as a guest presenter. And we'll continue to build if you want to do that. Because I've, I've saved a lot. Obviously, I'm not going to do a whole uh, blueprint in an hour and 38 minutes is how long I've been going. But I just want to say thank you for your energy. Thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you for sharing it. Again, everything that I do, everything that I learn, I share to empower because that is my gift to the world. That is what I came here to do. I know what my life path is. I'm very clear because I have a very special, unique way of breaking things down, right? Or breaking them apart so that we can really understand this. All right. Thank you all. Thank you all. I'm not going to do fadeaway music or none of that. <laughs> none of that. I might add it later to uh, the podcast. But what I will do is I'm going to uh, download the episode. I will upload it to our pot for our podcast listeners today so that they have access to the content. Again, I want to shout out to Kanum Alexander uh, for uh, top engagement. 
Uh, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your continued support as well. And he also is co-host for Spitting Policies that will be tuning in later on tonight. Reg, I appreciate you being honest. He says, listen, I had a light bulb today. It just went off. And I mean, could you imagine uh, just that spark of light that is in you that you're going to then light someone else, each one, teach one, each one and reach one. The goal is that we continue to do that, that we exhibiting and experiencing a great rising right now. We are experiencing that as a great rising. Don't let the times fool you that it's not a phenomenal time. It is an absolutely phenomenal time. I can say in terms of relative until money, in terms of money and rates and properties and opportunities, they are, they are available. They are there. Get with the team that has access. Get with the team that has access. Don't get caught up with big banks. Big banks uh, actually work for shareholders. So they're not going to risk shareholders money on you if you don't look picture perfect on paper. All right. And uh, that's my that's my two gold coins when it comes to, you know, real estate and direction and what next, because if that's been in your mind, that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to share. All right. So with that, I say I love you, love you, love you. Have a powerful and productive day. We'll see you next week on another information packed episode class or presentation on Ready, Set, Real Estate. Bye.